<laughs> right, so, hello, I'm Man, I'm Nad, like the rest of you, and I have no mental filter on what I say. I tell you, the first thing that comes into my head, which is good in a thing like this, not so good in Holland and Barrett. The other day, I was in Holland and Barrett, and the assistant had this badge, and it said, Ask me anything. I was like, cool. Do you know who the last pharaoh was? What? Well, you know, I was wondering, and uh, you're bad. And, and this is apparently not, it was about the stock, apparently. But, you know, and this other time, this was the first job I had, right? I was sitting there working like this. I'm a programmer, I don't know. This is me pretending to work. I'm good at pretending to work, I can do it for hours. Anyway, um, so I was sitting there pretending to work, and my boss comes up, says, this is Richard, he's new, which is confusing, because if he was new, he'd be a baby. But, um, but this mic is way too low now. Right, <laughs> this will like it. If he was new, he'd be a baby. But um, there he was, and he was new hire. So I looked up, and I want to be social, like you do, but I don't do social because I'm autistic. So, um, so I look up and I say, hello Richard, do you know what a courge is? <laughs> yeah, a courge, right? Because you know courgettes. Well, I guess a courgette must be a little courge. But I never go in Sainsbury's and see a sign saying Sainsbury's courges. So I don't know what they are, but I hoped you would. And he was like, he turned to my boss and said, could I sit somewhere else? So, you get the idea. I won't bore you with any more examples, but you know, they said, can I talk to you for 10 minutes? And I were like, 10 minutes? You'll have to drag me off stage, I could talk to you for 10 hours. Good grief. But, yeah. The no mental filter thing, you know? Just keeps you talking, and you would all be waiting, and I don't want to keep you waiting, because you guys, you know how to wait, yeah? You're kept waiting. That's what you do. That's what mentally ill people, they wait. You wait, you wait for the PIP assessment, you wait for the doctor, you wait for the council, social workers, everything. You have to wait. And I have to wait. I have, I am now, I think, the British expert on the inside of a psychologist's waiting room. Actually, it was my special subject of Mastermind last week. It was kind of like... Martin Mel Thurman, you have two minutes on the inside of a psychologist's waiting room, starting now. What's the average number of cups in the water machine? Zero? Correct. What's the average age? of the magazines on the shelf. 14 years? Correct. How many people borrow the videotapes? Nobody. Nobody has a video recorder anymore. You know. So what do you do? I bring a book. And I was reading about this doctor called Faust or something like that. And he decided he wanted golden power and guns and all that stuff. So he summoned a demon and sold his soul to the demon in order to get golden money and power and whatever it was. And I thought, you don't have to offer him your soul. Just keep him in the waiting room. Keep him in there long enough to offer you anything you want. you like, how long, how much, this is me being a demon, how much longer do I have to wait? <laughs> Just wait there, Mr. Mr. Evil. Won't be that long. Can you hurry up? I have to get back to my job. I'm an assessor for ATOS. Oh, yes. No, you, you just stay there and be quiet, or I'll throw holy water over you. Oh wait! There's no cups in the water machine! <laughs> you get the idea. So, uh... <laughs> I forgot the link.
<laughs> I hate it when they drive up on stage. Yeah, any ideas? I have no idea. Have you got me down your phone? Oh, crap. Hang on a minute. I hate it when this happens. Oh, yeah, right, okay, go. Carry on. I also have no short term memory. So, anyway, just one time. I was so tired of waiting for psychologists, and I was in a job that time programming, as I told you. And I went private. Um, while well, I could, which was good. And the main difference when you're going private is that, um, can somebody bring me a bottle of water? You sit there. When I said I was drying up on stage, I was literally drying up on stage, you understand? So, um, thanks. I can't talk anymore. Thank you. No water in the machine, remember. remember. Now, I went private, right? And the difference, going private, is that there are cups in the water machine. And you don't have to pay for the coffee machine. Which is great. Because coffee. So, I looked at this coffee machine, right? And it was like Captain Kirk's own coffee machine because it had so many buttons. There was like coffee with milk. Coffee, no milk. Tea. Milk, tea, no milk, tea, quite a bit of milk, tea, a tiny bit, loads of milk, Cho chocolates, cold chocolates, warmish chocolates with coffee, you know the sort of thing, it just went on and on. And right at the bottom, right at the bottom of the set of buttons, there was, there was a button with no label, an unlabeled button, and I'm an adventurous sort of person, right? So I press the unlabeled button, and you go, as, as we do, and I get this cup of mysterious unlabeled substance. So I drink it. Oh, it was so bad! It tasted of vinegar, and lemon juice, and floor. So bad. Anyway, so the psychiatrist comes out. And he says, what are you doing? And so I explained to him about the unlabeled button and, and this drink. And he says, that's the self-cleaning function. Yes, this happened to me, really. Anyway, yeah, you've been a, a, a fairly good audience. Wait a minute, that's my no metal filter again. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you, Swinton! <laughs>